My name is Anders Birkow. I'm an actor, entertainer, and motivational speaker. And besides some early attempts at different careers, a banker, a school teacher, I ended up educated and working as an actor. And I've been doing it for just about almost 40 years. Along the way, I also got a certification as business coach. I'm very dedicated to human skills and ongoing education. As an entertainer, I've had great success here in Denmark, being very popular and famous, doing TV shows, live shows with music comedy. Yeah, and I also got married and uh, became father of two lovely kids. Happy times, but as many other have experienced, I also got divorced. Yeah. I must admit it came as a surprise to me because my ex-wife, the mother of my kid, had been having um, an affair for a long period and now she wanted to live a life with a new man. Today, it is easy to tell it as it was. But back then, in the middle of the storm, I was devastated. I just could not understand what happened. I mean, why? Why me? And said with bitter irony, I was good looking, I was rich, I was a wonderful father, her friends and family loved me, excellent in the kitchen, the perfect modern man. Makes me think of someone once said, a woman needs a man that is rich, a man that can cook, a good lover, a good listener, and then she must make sure that those four guys don't know each other. <laughs> well, back to the grave situation and sad period, I was, well, really hurt. Yes, I can look back on a hard time of my life. Is there someone to blame? Nah. At the end of the day, you can never know exactly what kind of motives a person has to change their direction in life, such as my ex-wife did. Well, at that time, I did not have that deeper tolerance and understanding. Well, I began suffering from a mental illness, PLMM, a very infectious disease, more infectious than any virus. Actually, it can infect over the telephone because your mood is infecting other people's mood. So you are draining your surroundings from energy. I had become a high-maintenance person. Who are those people? I mean, you know probably people who has PLMM, which stands for Poor Little Miserable Me. <laughs> people on your daily job, in your sports club, in your family, social gatherings. Maybe you have it yourself. And it does infect other people. Who exactly are those people? Hmm, suffering from poor little miserable me syndrome. For instance, a friend that keeps on talking about his or her problem regarding a relationship, regarding the disease, regarding um, divorce, well, miserable complaints that goes on and on. Whenever you meet them, they play the same story over and over with very little variations. Woohoo! I don't know what to do with this. I don't know what to do with that. I still have problems with my landlord. It's so unfair. 
I still have a problem with my boyfriend. The taxes are too high, etc., etc. You probably have accepted the first time they talk about their situation and you listen to it politely and to be a person with empathy. But afterwards, oh, it's almost like they have bought a subscription on your ear canal. <laughs> they have bought the right for them to tell and you to listen. Yeah, I realized that I was suffering from PLMM. I was miserable. And I was telling about my sadness and my problems to my friends and family daily. My good old mother, loving, tough, she saw her son walking around like a zombie with self-pity. Yes, I, 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 I was desperate. I, my life was going down in flames. But then she said, and I've taken this sentence ever since to my heart, do not focus on how you feel, focus on how you deal. <laughs> What? <laughs> do not focus on how you feel, focus on how you deal. In other words, everybody has challenges and tragedies in their life. And of course, you have feelings about it. You feel sad, angry, but your job is not to focus on how you feel. Your job is to focus on how you deal. So, with my mother's proverb, I moved on. I got back on track. And I started to create an optimistic and positive mindset. One of my favorites, John Maxwell, he says, I'm never down. I'm up or on my way up. He refuses to say that he's down. Well, I moved on, of course, in the right direction, upwards. And um, I've taken this lesson to heart. And being well aware that a human being can be human and discover new challenges and tragedies in their life. Of course they can. Sometimes problems are knocking on the door. But in that sense, it's my ability now to teach and inspire people on this subject. And I'm glad to tell you an extra story that will emphasize the value of this good Lesson, okay? The lesson is focus not on how you feel. Focus on how you deal. As an actor, sometimes I'm invited to an audition, a voice test for cartoon characters. And uh, yeah, Disney and other companies, they prefer that uh, their characters talk Danish in Denmark. Hocus pocus. Many years ago, I was invited to do a voice test for the character of Mickey Mouse. Normally, there's just one audition, one voice test, and then a few weeks later, you get the answer, accepted or not accepted. But this time, there were two auditions. On the day of the second audition, my calendar was blank, somehow deleted. So I went out to play golf. Imagine me standing on the ninth green on my golf course and my phone was vibrating in my pocket. I took it just for a quick reply. I said, hey, is Anders? Yeah, this is a studio. Where are you? You should have been here 15 minutes ago. What? I took my golf bag, threw it in the car, and drove like a maniac towards Copenhagen. Normally that trip takes 40 minutes, it took 20 minutes. Must have been light traffic. <laughs> I reached the reception and asked the receptionist, 
Where is it? Oh, it's over in the studio, seven, and they are all waiting for you. Uh, oh, yeah. Imagine my whole body was full of cold sweat. This was so embarrassing. In show business, you do not come late. And I was almost an hour late. Okay. So um, you said all the, all the others, uh, you mean the other actors are waiting? No, no, no. It's only you. Oh my, oh my. What do you mean by all the others? Oh, they flew two directors in from Finland, two from Norway, and two from Sweden, and we got two from Denmark, plus, you know, Mr. Blake Todd, the guy who has been working with the real Walt Disney for many years, he flew in from Palm Springs to orchestrate this audition with you. <laughs> Holy moly. So I went to the studio, and you know the situation, when, when we were kids and we were embarrassed, then we opened the door slowly. <laughs> it doesn't help. <laughs> I opened the door, and there stood Mr. Blake Todd. I said, hello, Anders. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What happened? I, I, I was... Uh, I was out playing golf. <laughs> you play golf? Oh, that's a wonderful game. Whenever you come to Palm Springs, you'll call me and we'll have a game of golf together. Just you and me. You promise? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. You see, his attitude was very special. No, normally on a Workplace, you would be met with anger and scolding, right? But, no, Mr. Todd's job was to make this unfortunate situation better. So he praised me and raised me up, building up my confidence, because then I could perform the best. If I could perform the best, then he could perform the best. And telling the directors from Scandinavia how to be, what to be aware of regarding a Mickey Mouse voice. Okay? So, in fact, if we can see the parallel, he was making the best of a situation. His proof were, were probably the same. It doesn't matter how you feel. What matters is how you deal. He was disnified, which means that he was totally disinfected from a negative attitude. Yeah. So some of you youngsters here in the audience may have heard my voice before. If you ever have seen Mickey's Clubhouse or Disney's Channel, then I have been a part of your upbringing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But if you ever sit there again with your kids or grandkids, well, and you hear this voice, Hi, you listen, Tim, my Mickey Mouse. Come on, snart med hen i mit klubhus. Ho, ho. Det er mig. <laughs> Through the years, I have discovered many truths about Disney's duck town. And uh, though I'm very well aware that you know the difference between a mouse and a duck, I will now tell you the difference between those two characters. Mickey Mouse versus Donald Duck. Let's just see it. Okay, Donald Duck, actually a loving character, but we love him, kind of love him, but we know it. He's a little bit funny, right? 
He has a fierce temper. He's always unlucky. Think he sometimes is lucky, just like all those lotto players. He's vindictive. He's lazy. This picture, he's holding a gold statue. He's a hammock. He hates it when others succeed. He rejoices over the misfortunes of others. Those two last bullet points is part of the job, job description on a tabloid newspaper. This picture, take a look. Poor little miserable me, poor little miserable me. Yep. He's got the PLM. Poor little miserable me. Mickey Mouse, Walt's first character. Actually, his first name was, no one knows? Steamboat Willie. Yeah. He helps others. He keeps moving forward, creates success together, wide embracing. He's a natural leader. He's optimistic. He's an entrepreneur. If you can dream it, you can do it. Enjoys and praises others and their success. So who do you want to be in here? You want to be Mickey Mouse or do you want to be Donald Duck? The choice is yours, but let your sunrise and sunset look like this, okay? <laughs> and let me just finish with a little sentence of one of my favorites, John Maxwell. Because we can change. We are all leaders. We are leaders of our own life. Becoming a better leader will not happen by chance. Becoming a better leader will happen by change. Thank you. <laughs>